Utz bagged another acquisition this week. It's third one since going public last August. This one will make it a larger player in the Chicago snack food market. Let's bring in Utzio Dylan Lissette for more. Dylan, good to see you as always here. Uh, so you acquired a brand called Vintners, uh, well known in the Chicago area. Why Chicago? Well, really, it's uh, the fourth largest uh, salty snacks market in the United States. Um, it's right on a contiguous path for us as we move like from the East Coast uh, into the Midwest. Um, we really like it because it's the sort of the, the, the starting point for further expansion into Michigan, into Wisconsin, into other areas of the Midwest. So it's a great, uh, great brand. But uh, importantly, we're going to be able to take our power brands that we have uh, Oots and Zaps and Good Health and Boulder Canyon and other brands that we have onto that uh, distribution network within Chicago uh, really soon after closing. You know, we were joking before we came on air that, uh, you know, I read your S1, maybe not all 390 pages, but most of it. And there's one theme to your company. You've been aggressive in acquiring other companies the past 10 years, uh, certainly since you went public. One thread throughout all these deals, at least to me, the multiples you're getting, uh, look very, very attractive. They seem low compared to, let's say, other brands in the market. How are you finding these deals and, and what are you finding inside these companies? Why are you getting them so cheap? Well, it's a great question. I mean, I, I will say that it's a, uh, a testament to our team. It's a testament to the fact that um, the company has been around for 100 years. Uh, I've been uh, with us for now over 25 years. And I think we built the reputation as a good acquirer. And we've gone after, uh, quite frankly, some pretty complicated deals um, that maybe um, other people, you know, would not take the time or the effort to execute on. Um, we did in 2016 a, a, a take private of a public company. We did another take private in 2017. We extracted some uh, DSD assets from the ConAgra company in 2019. And again, this latest one in, in Chicago with Vintners is an extraction of uh, a, a, a set of a, a you know subpart of a company. Uh, so it's complicated. And I think that may be one of the reasons that we uh, are able to uh, get so many of them done because we're willing to do the work. Hey, Dylan, it's Julie here. It's good to see you. So walk us through just from a sort of logistics perspective, when you integrate these companies, what that looks like. Do you end up consolidating manufacturing um, operations or is it more um, distribution operations to, to make those acquisitions uh, make sense for you? How does that work? Yeah, I mean, every single one that we've done has been uh, somewhat different, but just zeroing in on Vintners uh, as an example, in this case, we actually bought the intellectual property to the Vintners brand and we're moving the production of the potato chips and the cheese curls and the popcorns out of its current owner's facilities over time into one of our facilities uh, that we operate already. So we're gonna move those pounds into our production facility, increasing uh, the efficiency uh, of that facility by use, utilizing more capacity. So that's one aspect of it. Obviously on the distribution side, what we are able to do is integrate it somewhat. If we have existing operations in the area, we may be able to, you know, take out a warehouse or, um, you know, um, uh, synergize some routes, make them more uh, effective. As an example, we acquired Kitchen Cooked, uh, which is a central Illinois brand in December of 2019. And we really were able to bring a lot more of our power brand products onto that distribution network and increase the efficiency of those routes. Uh, and penetrate and get greater ACV and, and, and market share for our brands. Uh, so it's a complicated um, uh, system of integration and, and each deal that we do have done has a little bit of different uh, flavor to it, but it's it's something we're really good at uh, at this point because our, our team has done so many of them that it's not just four or five people doing these uh, integrations. It's you know, 30, 40, 50 people within the organization who've done a lot of them. I've got I've got a request from someone on our team to bring back the oats uh, crab chips, um, but uh, I do. We still wanna, have them. We still have crab chips. That's what I thought too. I'm I'm a big fan of the Zaps chips as well, which I know is in your portfolio. Um, this might seem like a silly question, but when you talk about buying the intellectual property and then bringing the manufacturing in house, how do you preserve? I mean, for people who are really loyal to these products, because that's kind of the way that people are with these kinds of snacks, right? How do you make sure that that they do taste exactly the same if you're using the same recipes? Yeah but you're making it in a different facility. 
Yeah, 100 percent. And so in a case like this where we bought the intellectual property, we're getting the full recipe. We understand what equipment it's being made on. Our teams will work with their team to ensure that we're making it the right way. Um, you, you know, for example, I just saw uh, the Zaps bag on the um, on the screen. You know, we, we are actually having our 10 year anniversary in April of this uh, year of 2021 of acquiring the Zaps brand. The Zaps brand is now made in three different manufacturing plants across the country. The brand has grown tremendously. And part of that is because we really have stayed true to the quality of that product since the day we bought them. So we're very uh, in tune. We have a, a great team that's very in tune to making sure that we don't just buy something and change something. We will go out of our way to ensure that we have the right processing equipment or uh, manufacturing equipment, the right recipes, and we're using the same suppliers, the same corn, the same masa, the same seasoning, you know, whatever it is that we can make sure that we are replicating it uh, as, as close as, you know, humanly possible. And Dylan, just finally, um, thinking about the the mix this year, it's been such a strange year um, for anyone in the grocery category that the habits people have gone back to. Um, you know, comfort food has been a big part of what consumers have defaulted to. When I think comfort food, I think potato chips. Um, you know, I think about hot cheese twists, things like this. Um, what has that mix been like, and, and how do you maybe think about uh, any normalization in trends, or, or did people, you know, try to be healthy and realize I actually like potato chips, and I'm just going to keep buying them even when the pandemic's over? Yeah, I mean, 100%, you know, as a company, especially prior to the uh, Truco on the border tortilla chip acquisition, we were heavily weighted towards potato chips. About 50% of our business was potato chips. And in the year 2020, uh, especially through sort of, you know, March forward when, when the pandemic and the eat at home trends really started, um, you know, potato chips just grew tremendously. I mean, you know, much more so than pretzels, much more so than tortillas. Um, uh, and that that trend is is abating a little bit, where it's slowing down a little bit. But to your point on comfort food, on legacy brands, on buying what you know, um, some of the better for you brands are not uh, selling as much as you would expect. Typically in January, you'll have that uh, big lift of um, you know dieting and better for you eating, and and we, we're definitely seeing that as well. But those trends tend to to abate, you know, as you can imagine, you 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 dedicate yourself to work out every day the first day of January, and by you know ten or fifteen days in, you you may have given up on that uh, endeavor uh, somewhat. So we we we've been at this for a very long time uh, as a company and as brand managers, and so we kind of understand the seasonality of a lot of these trends from you know uh, potato chip eating to better better for you eating to keto and pork rinds and no carbs and all of the different uh, nuances. Hey Dylan, since we have you in the chair, I mean, you wanna you wanna announce any more deals? I mean, you're on with us. Clearly, you're on a roll. <laughs> well, I, I can't do that. Uh, what I will tell you is That's that right. um, I think I, I think we're really good at it, and so um, you know we've got a uh, we're we're a pure play salty snack uh, brand, and and we want to be the fastest growing, and we want to be the the second largest platform in the U.S., and we're well on our way. All right. Well, I had to try. Just want to be doing my job. If I didn't, we'll leave it there. Uh, CEO Dylan Lissette, always good to see you. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. We'll talk to you soon. Yes, you too. Thank you very much.